Hello and welcome to another episode of Yule Acres when we're talking about beekeeping. Now, specifically what we're talking about beekeeping today is going to be choosing a species of bees that works best for you in your particular situation. Let's get started. Welcome and we're glad that you are joining us today. Now, today Whereas we're talking about what's going to be the best species for you because there are literally hundreds of species and subspecies of honeybees when you're looking at the western honeybee. So when you're looking at it, you first have to take a look at why is it that you or me personally am getting into beekeeping. Are you getting into it because you want to help the bees because of colony collapse and all the other issues they're, they're having? Do you just find them fascinating so you want to get involved in it? Are you looking at it to get into for the ability to pollinate because you have a small garden or a couple fruit trees or you even have a larger orchard, a small farmstead, something like that. So you want to get a really strong pollinator. Are you looking at getting a much wider scenario where you want to get into it a little bit more for profit, not just for personal use, but even more so for profit? So you want to get honey, you want to get wax out of it, you maybe want to take a look at comb honey. Are you wanting to go a little bit larger for, say, a commercial setting, so you want to get into pollination contracts? All of these things is important to take a look at getting into it. Now, if you're looking at it just for the pollination aspect of it, but you don't want it for any other reason than that, then I would advise you to go a different route than the Western honeybee, because there are mason bees, there are leaf cutter bees, or any number of other native solitary bee species that you could get into that would be a better fit for you. That's what I would recommend. But if you want to get it into it, not only just for pollination, but for some of those other factors that we talked about, then honeybees may be right for you. But that's the number one thing that you have to take a look at when getting to take a look at the honeybees is what do you want them for? Because there are many different species with many strong attributes and they each do things strongly for the different areas. Now, when you are looking at a species, there's generally 10 different attribute traits that I like to look at. Some of them are going to be more important. Some of them are going to be less important. They're not really any importance in any orders, but there are a couple that I find most important, and I will describe those. So for some of the traits that you're looking at um, is the first one is production. How productive are these honeybees going to be? Are they really strong pollinators? Are there going to be a higher reproduction weight? If you are looking for honeybees to help as a strong pollinator for your garden or farm, then that would be something to take a look into. Getting a species of bees that has very strong pollination attributes or production attributes. Another thing that you'd probably want to look into is the location of where you're going to be putting your bees. Are they just going to be in your backyard? Are they going to be in a neighbor's backyard because you personally don't have the room for it, but you still want to do it? Maybe looking at doing a rent a hive situation or a friend with a backyard that has that. Where is it that you're going to stick these bees? And is it going to be an environment that's going to be strong for them? There's a lot of different things that are factors with that to take a look at. Kind of going along with the location of where you're going to be sticking your bees is if the what is your local climate the environmental factors that it has do you live in the far north of canada or russia or high mountainous area where you have really strong cold winters that can tend to be very long so you have to have something with higher winter resistance do you live in miami georgia or even some other area that has a little bit more moderate or warmer climate so you need a bee that's not necessarily going to have a strong winter resistance but it's going to be a little bit more active that can handle the heat those environmental factors are probably going to be one of the more important ones that i would recommend and take a look at and that's probably one of the most important ones that i could recommend is get a bee species that is going to be regional to your area that is very very strong Kind of going along with that of the location and dealing with that, another thing that you'll want to take a look at is what are the 
legalities of you owning a hive. Do you live in a city or municipality that allows honeybees? Are you kind of going underneath the radar? Check with your local ag advisor if you live in the United States. They have county bee commissioners that can help with that and determine what the legality is. Or do you live in an area that is very friendly versus not? I would check with your local city because before you drop hundreds if not thousands of dollars getting into the beekeeping program, what is it? Are you even allowed to do beekeeping? Another portion of legality that is something to be concerned about is do you have a next door neighbor? Do you have kids that are heavily allergic to bees? What if a bee flies over to my neighbor's yard and stings it? These are living animals that we're dealing with here. And so are you going to be on the hook if a bee goes and stings the next door kid? Or let's say a neighborhood dog starts messing with one of the hives. What are you going to be liable if they go on a frenzy and the dog gets hurt because he gets stung several hundreds, thousands of times because he's sniffing around in a hive where he shouldn't have. That's one thing to keep in mind is, is that something that you want to deal with? Because when you're dealing with legalities, it's not if it's going to happen, it's when it's going to happen. Like for me personally, one thing that I do just to help out with that is I've got a sister who is deathly allergic to bees and if she gets stung she can go into anaphylactic shock luckily for me wanting to do beekeeping i'm not in that category i've been stung many times and it yes it hurts but you just kind of build up a resistance to it so one of the things that i do that i've personally done is i have a small supply of epi pins on hand so in case something like that does happen then I can go ahead and give her an EpiPen shot and help my sister out if she happens to be visiting and happens to get stung with having bees nearby. Another thing that is important to take a look at is what is the temperament of your bees? Are they going to be a little bit calmer to work with because they're a very gentle bee and so you're, they're a lot easier to work with? Or do you have a more aggressive bee? By and large, most of the popular bee species that are known and work with today have a reputation for being very gentle. And so that is one of the things that you want to take a look at is how gentle or hard aggressive are these bees to work with. And that's probably one of the more important ones too is the temperament. It's no fun beekeeping if every single time you try to get into the hive and they're automatically going to be on the warpath. Probably another one of the more important things to take a look at is disease resistance of the bees. In the 60s and 70s, this wasn't as big of a problem, but as you start getting into modern day and how bees traveling with pollination contracts and hives traveling all over across, at least for the United States, coast to coast, our entire agriculture system within the United States is entirely based off of migratory hives and migratory pollination contracts. And that's just how the ag industry has now become developed in the United States with that has become a major explosion and issue with varroa mite and trachea mite. So are you going to have a bee species that's going to be more resistant to these issues as it's become more common of a problem? Is your bee a little bit more susceptible to American fowl brood or European fowl brood or wax moth? What is it that these attributes of these bees have to better deal with these potential issues that have it? If you have a bee that is more naturally resistant to these issues, then it makes it a lot easier and less things that you have to do if you do anything at all for supplemental treatment of these issues. Another thing to keep in mind is if you are getting into the uh, profit realm of things is what is the quality of products? Are they a high producer of honey? If, are you going to sell some extra honey? Are you going to use some of the excess wax to make candles? If they are a high producer of honey and doing that, then that might be something to take a look at. It's not something that I would say is high on the list, but definitely one to keep in mind. One of the other things that kind of goes along with the environmental resilience of the bees, and if it's regional to your, your area, is what is the history or lineage of the honeybee? Is it an old honeybee lineage line with a really long track record or is it un, an unknown mixed breed species that is kind of a different and has unknown genetics or lineage 
that is one thing to keep in mind. Is it important, I would say, kind of weighing your factors, is it important to get a really long history lineage of a bee out of Georgia or Florida, which is a very strong powerhouse in the beekeeping in the United States, or is just due to the warmer climate, they can produce a lot more, but in my area where it's really cold, do I really want to get it, be getting bees out of Georgia and not knowing if they'll survive the winter, whereas I can go up to my buddy neighbor down the road where he's got a mixture of bees that he doesn't know what the species is, but it survived for 15 generations in our cold climate. That's something to keep in mind. Another thing that kind of goes along with this is reproduction rates. How quickly is it that the bees can reproduce? Can you split your hives quickly or is it a slow growing one? How often do they swarm? Bees, different species of bees have different tendencies to swarm really early in spring or are they a little bit slower and so they're not as apt to do that. Are you someone who likes to get up early in spring and dealing with that so you'll actually be available for the swarming of the bees? Or are you kind of a late bloomer? You like to stay indoors, read a good book, and you don't like getting out when it's a little bit colder. Well, if you have a species of bees that swarms a little bit earlier in springtime, then half your hive could just fly away and your production of honey that year could be a lot lower. That is something to keep in mind. Also, the other thing to keep in mind is going to be the noted range of the bees. How does your personal area look? Do you have a lot of alfalfa fields? Do you have a lot of fruit orchards where there's going to be a significant amount of nectar? There's going to be a significant amount of pollen and food sources for them to live. Or do you live in the middle of a cornfield where, yes, there is a ton of pollen, but there's really not all that much nectar because corn is pollinated by wind and so they really don't have that form with bees that's another thing to keep in mind is what are the food sources in your local area do you live in a suburban area where there are lots of flowers and there's lots of lovely urban landscapes where they are is a strong food source for them or do you live in the middle of a industrialized city complex where all you're going to find is trash weeds and the quality of honey is going to be a lot lower not to mention just in order to get a good quality source of food they are going to be traveling vast distances just to try and find it and so you're going to be doing a lot of supplemental feeding whether that's pollen patties or um, liquid nectar things like that so those are some of the major things to keep in mind those are some of the major attributes that I would suggest to take a look at. There's probably more out there that I haven't touched on, but these are the major ones that I can think of right now. Now, looking at a couple of the main species to kind of give you an idea of what you're dealing with, at least in my regional area, there are two major species that most people are running with. Now, I know that there are more dozens out there and it can change based on your regional area, but just at least in my regional area, there are two main ones that people run with. The first and by far the most popular is the Italian honeybee. And that's primarily what most of my bees are, if not all of them at this point, because they kind of crossbred and done a few other things. But for the most part, I think all my hives right now are Italian bees. Be why? Because it is by far a very strong all around good bee. It has a very good gentleness. Now, occasionally it can get a little bit more aggressive where if they're a little bit upset, They'll do what's called thumping. Well, they'll kind of fly and hit you in the forehead and say, hey, warning, I'm getting a little bit more angry and nervous about you being around me. And so they'll give you a warning thump on your forehead, which, you know, I like. That's appreciative. It's nice to get a warning when the person you're dealing with is a little bit upset and telling you to leave me alone. They have really good, strong spring buildup. They can handle it well, and they overwinter really well, which is something that is in particularly important in my area because I then have very long, harsh winters. And so that's one of the more in important attributes that I look for in honeybees that can handle a very strong, cold climate. The other thing is they're okay at swarming, and so if they tend to build up a little bit quicker than I can get to, then they have a tendency to swarm, which works well for me because it means I can double my hives and get more colonies. They have a strong pollination, which is something else that I look for because I do have some plants, I do have a farm, and that is something that I want to help with my fruit production as I go to sell them. They have a very, very strong honey production, which is another thing that... I look for because aside of 
the fruits and vegetables that I sell as a side income. I also sell the excess honey that they produce that I'm able to harvest for that they don't need for winter. And so that is something that is very, very important that I look at. Their wax and propolis production is not all that strong, but that's not something in particular that I look for. Yes, if there is excess wax or propolis, I'll use that in making lip balms or salve, something like that, that I can sell on the side. But that is very, very small in comparison to the amount of honey that I sell or the benefit that I get from pollinations due to the vegetables. Those are just some of the main attributes that I look at. Um, they also have a fairly strong resilience to mites that they've kind of been growing and the bees that i have have survived for several winters and several generations in my area that's why i've chosen to get them the second one that tends to be really strong in my area is the carniolan uh, honeybee it has a much stronger gentleness it's actually more gentle than the italian honeybee that's why a lot of people like them and it's kind of growing popularity in my area as well the uh, downside to them, though, is they have a very strong winter buildup, and they tend to swarm really early in spring. And in my area, where it has really long, cold winters, that can potentially be a problem because they're going to be a little bit more active in early spring. They're going to use up their winter stores a lot faster, which means if that happens, in order for them to potentially survive and so they don't die out of starvation, then you have to do supplemental feeding through pollen patties or through a liquid feed substitute or adding extra frames that you may have saved that you haven't actually harvested yet for winter. So that is one thing why I personally don't work with them as much because I want to reduce as much of their winter activity as possible so I, don't ha so I have to do less of that supplemental feeding. Another thing that works really well is they have a very, very strong high pollination. And that's why a lot of guys that do pollination contracts like the Cardinalians, because they are very active in pollination. And with them being more active, you're going to get a higher pollination rate, which means you can get a higher guaranteed rate for those pollination contracts. So if that's specifically what you're getting for, then maybe Cardinalians is something that you want to take a look into. Their honey production is also pretty good as well. It's not going to be near as high as the Italians, but you still have a very strong, good honey production. And similar to Italians, they're going to be very low in the wax or propolis. The other good thing about the Cardinalians, though, is they do have very strong winter resilience and can survive in cold, shaller climates. That's why they're starting to become a little bit more popular as well. But those are the two main areas in my local geographic area. I know there are some other ones. You've got the major, like the Buckfast, the Russian, German, Caucasian, Saskatchewan bees that's really starting to make a lot of inroads in the Northeast United States, and I've actually considered trying some of them myself. I'd have to order them in because there's not a local beekeeper that I have or a buddy of mine that is working with them. They're mostly Italian or Carnolians, and that's one of the reasons why I did choose Carnolians and Italians is because it's locally readily available in my area. But take a look at bees that work best in your area, and that's probably by far the number one most important thing that I could emphasize is find a bee that is resilient and has strong environmental resilience in your area. Strong. And find something that works for you. If it has strong attributes, roll with it. I would say there are many different things, and it's not a one-stop-fits-all answer for each environment because there are bees that work really well in the heat of Florida that would not work well in my climate that has very cold winters, even though my summers do get very, very hot into the triple digits occasionally. Whereas in other areas, like in the far north of Canada, northern hemisphere, you do want something that is going to be a lot more cold hardy. It all depends on personal circumstances. Now that you know the major attributes and what some of the things are to look for in bees, and combining that with the different types of what you personally want out of your bees, take a look, do some more research, and get something that works best for you. That's the one. The nice thing about this is there's so many different kinds, there's so many different attributes. You can get it tailor-made to your specific situation. So, I'd like to thank you for joining us as we talk about the choosing a species of bees that works best for you in your particular situation. Don't forget to subscribe, 
click the bell for uh, future videos and notifications. And we look forward to seeing you next time as we continue our journey on talking about beekeeping.